Hey guys and welcome to Crazy Burger. So in this video I'm going to be looking at all the games on the 400 Mini. Now I didn't look at them in any great deal of depth in the review video that I did. If you missed that I'll leave a link in the description. And But in this video I'm purely looking and going through every game and playing them and giving my first impressions to what they are actually like. Um, so without further ado, let's get stuck into the games starting with Airball. Okay, first up is Airball, and this one is a very tricky game to play. Um, obviously, due to that isometric style, sometimes it was tricky to know whether I'm pressing up, down, left or right on the D-pad. Now, obviously in this video, I have actually entirely played the games using the gamepad, which you can buy from Amazon, or if you've got an A500 Mini, you can use that joypad or gamepad that came with that. Um, some games are certainly better in this video using the joystick that was included and some games won't be. Um, I think it's just down to experimentation. Now, I'm going to do a further video at some point, um, sort of detailing which controllers to try and which to use, which work and which don't. Um, but in this video I've just entirely used the gamepad. Now, Airball is okay, but it's a tricky one to master. I think you're supposed to be collecting parts or a spell book or something. Um, but I got a little bit lost, got a bit frustrated with the controls, and I have to say I wasn't a massive fan. I like the graphics and stuff, and I'll certainly need to give it a little bit more time. Okay, next up is Asteroids. Now, I have to admit, I don't think this is the best version of Asteroids at all. I've played so many different versions over the years, from Atari 2600, C64, I don't know. The list goes on and on. Um, but personally, I don't think this is a particularly great version. Um, even trying to actually start the game seems to be a bit of a problem. It takes forever to even get started. Um, but anyway, I don't think it's that great. It seems a little bit sluggish to me, and there are, sadly, far better versions out there. Um, but if you like Asteroids, you might get more out of it than me. Um, I've never really been a particularly big fan, so that probably doesn't help. Okay, so I think I can confidently say that this is probably the worst game on uh, the 400 Mini. And now some of the games are showing their age a little bit, and this one probably is the worst by far. I think it's probably better if you played with another human player rather than um, against the computer, because it really is very, very dull. The, the rules are very simple. You can't even score three points outside the, the sort of circle area there, but... It's, there's not a lot to it, there's four minute games here um, and I accidentally reset the game a few times by pressing the wrong button on the gamepad and you'll probably do the exact same on the joystick. Personally, I don't think it's very good, they could probably have just left this off and no one would have probably noticed or cared. So 
So next up it's Battlezone. Um, this certainly is a classic of its time. Um, I love the sort of vector style graphics as well, really cool. I remember playing this back in the Atari 2600 and it was really cool then as well. Um, I'm not that great at it to be honest, um, but I really enjoyed it. It is a good fun game to play and certainly a classic of its time. Okay, so this is Berserk. Now, just be careful what difficulty level you choose here. If you keep going up with the difficult levels here, if you look at the bottom left, I'm obviously increasing it. The higher that number, the more difficult the game will be. Make sure it's set at the easiest one, which is, I think, number one, um, where the enemies probably move the slowest and are the easiest to try and defeat. But even in saying that, it is a really tough game. I love the speech samples throughout this game. It certainly makes me laugh quite a lot. Um, this is a real classic, but it is very, very tough indeed. Um, um, I didn't make a heck of a lot of progress on it, sadly. Um, and interestingly enough, this game was actually remade recently on modern consoles. Haven't played that version yet, but this version is pretty cool. Okay, now there's no doubt that this is a classic game. It's been in lots of different systems over the years. Um, interestingly enough, this was also on the recent C64 Collection 3 on Evercade, which I got to play quite a lot. But I actually think this version is better. It looks pretty similar, to be honest, to the Commodore 64 version. Um, but I think this one seems a little bit slicker for me. Um, I might just be imagining it. There's probably not a lot in it. But I quite enjoy this game. It is very tough. But this is a classic, a real decent game. Um, um, and might be one of the better games on the collection, no doubt about it.
Okay, so this is Bristles, and this one initially seems quite cool, but it does get a little bit frustrating uh, for me. Um, but interestingly enough, I'd never played this game before, uh, so that was entirely new to me until uh, the 400 Mini was actually announced. Um, so the, I guess the idea is to try and paint the the white, as you can see there, uh, to the different colour that's been selected, which in this case it's actually green, but it varies on level to level. You can use those lifts to go up and down, try and avoid the enemies type of thing, and those enemies definitely get frustrating, um, as do the lifts, which just keep knocking you back to the start. I like the idea of the game, I think it's really, really cool, but the concept, the controls, the frustration, it just starts to annoy me a little bit and I got a bit frustrated. But there's certainly a decent enough game, I like the idea, the concept is really good. So Capture the Flag seems a bit of an odd inclusion to be honest, um, but give it a little bit of time it might actually grow on you. Um, I think it's probably better suited to be playing human versus human rather than against the computer, because um, I feel as if the computer is cheating to be honest, it really does feel as if it's homing in on you deliberately, as if it knows exactly where you are, which seems completely unfair to me. Um, but the idea is pretty cool I guess, so obviously one of you is trying to capture the flag, the other uh, sort of computer or the other opponent is trying to actually stop you from doing that. The idea is alright, I like the sort of style, the graphic style, and obviously for that time this would have been really, really cool. Um, as a game, now it's probably a little bit boring. Um, and probably doesn't make a lot of sense. You might play it a couple of times and then never really go back to it. Um, but I think you'll probably get more out of this if you've got a fellow human or another person that you want to actually play with, or your dog or whatever. But anyway, there's a game there, but just not against the computer. Next up, it's Centipede. I'm pretty sure most people must have played a version of this at some point throughout their lives. Um, I'm pretty sure I played the arcade version. I played the Atari 2600 version quite a lot as well. It was really good fun. Um, but it's probably one of those games that's great for a quick bash, maybe a quick high score challenge, I guess. Um, but it does get a little bit boring after a while. Um, but it's still a classic and it certainly deserves to be on the 400 Mini as part of the Carousel games. Now 
Now it's no surprise that there's a few games on here that are staple games for Atari products over the last number of years. Crystal Castle, Centipede, Millipede, those are ones that you always see on all the different products that seem to get released. Um, and this version is actually really, really good. Um, sometimes I got a little bit stuck though with the, the movement. Um, obviously it's that isometric style again. I'm not sure if it's the gamepad or you'd probably be better off using the joystick. Not entirely sure, um, but it still is a little bit cumbersome to actually sort of manoeuvre your way around the different grids and collect all the gems um, before the monsters do. Um, it's a really fun game, it really is cool, but at times the controls certainly let it down a little bit for me. Okay, Electra Glide. This one is a bit of an oddity. It really is weird. It's kind of a, like a driving game. I guess it's a driving game, but it's weird. You're basically trying to get to the end. You've got a time limit um, and you've got accelerate and brake. Very simple, but there's a lot of objects. You need to basically avoid those objects uh, or they will stop your progress. Um, and every time you get hit, you'll get slowed down and you'll probably not make the end of that stage. Um, it's an interesting game. It is just a little bit weird. Um, I'd almost rather be playing something like pole position rather than this, but anyway, you get the idea. It's okay, it doesn't seem to work that great on the gamepad. I felt that the gamepad was just a little bit oversensitive, so maybe it would be better using the sort of stiffer joystick that's included. It probably would suit this game a lot better than the gamepad. So next up it's Encounter and this is a really cool sort of 3D styled shooting game where you need to take out the different alien invaders across the different landscapes. Um, and I really enjoyed this one, I thought it was really really cool. Uh, never heard of it before and never actually played it so it's another one, one of those gems that I'm really chuffed about to actually discover and play. It's certainly one of the better games on the, the mini console, no doubt about it.
Next up it's Flip and Flop, um, and this is another isometric style game. It's more of a sort of puzzle style game where you need to uh, stand on the highlighted squares um, until you've exhausted all of the options and then completed each stage. Now obviously this is another isometric style game, still a little bit tricky on the controls but it's not nowhere near as bad as Airball, um, it's certainly a lot more fun to play than Airball I thought, and um, that's just my personal opinion at the end of the day, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Pretty tricky, I thought maybe the D-pad again is maybe just a little bit too sensitive, it might actually suit the joystick a lot better as well. And that's actually made it quite interesting to me that some games are probably better with different uh, controllers, um, and it's something I'll probably have to have a look at in a future video. Um, but anyway, I quite enjoyed this game, I thought it was really cool. So next up it's Henry's House, this was an entirely new experience for me, never heard of the game before or never even played it either. Um, although I, I think this game is probably one of the best looking games that you'll see on the 400 mini carousel games. Lovely, bright and colourful graphics, looks really cool but unfortunately I think it's far too difficult. Um, I think when I initially played the game I got to about the second or third level but it's tough as nails. Um, I felt that as soon as you touch something like the boots or some the smiley face for example that's going across you will die instantly and I found it a big source of frustration to actually play through and um, I thought the d-pad was probably just a little bit too sensitive I think you need more intricate movement whereas the, the joystick would probably be better suited to this game uh, I'm pretty sure there's people out there that's probably played this a lot more than me and maybe enjoy it more but personally I just found it a really frustrating experience <laughs> So next up it's Hover Bother, <laughs> Hover Bother, it's obviously quite a tricky one to say, Hover Bother with two V's. Um, so this one is obviously from Jeff Minter, it's a really weird idea, in fact probably this is probably one of his least weird games. So you're, obviously the idea is you've stole the lawnmower to cut the, the sort of lawn or grass um, as you can see on the screen here. You can completely ignore the flowers, you don't need to cut them, just the grass um, and you've got a handy dog here that can um, sort of keep off the, the sort of person there that's trying to get their lawnmower back that you've stolen basically. Um, but if they get it back you'll get another one and you'll basically keep going until you've cut the grass. Um, you can press the fire button, that will activate the, the sort of guard dog to try and keep that 
purse in that bay from uh, getting anywhere near you but <laughs> it's hard to describe this game the, the dog gets in the way of the lawnmower and you're trying to sort of shake the, the joystick I guess to try and get free but honest to goodness what a weird concept but it's actually strangely addictive to play um, I remember playing this back on the Commodore 64 it was included as a demo game on probably Commodore format I guess, um, and I remember playing it back then, and I thought it was really addictive. Um, this is very similar to the Commodore 64 version. It's most likely this came before the Commodore 64 version, and it's really good fun to play. It's just a bit strange, no doubt about it. Next up, it's the absolute classic Lee, which was obviously known as Bruce Lee back in the day, um, and this is a really cool version. Now, I actually played this quite recently on the C64 collection on Evercade, um, and it's fantastic on that as well. This is quite similar to the Commodore 64 version, it's equally as addictive. Maybe the sound isn't quite as good, um, but the idea of the game is to collect all the lanterns on each of the levels to progress to the next stage. You will always get those enemies constantly reappearing, the black ninja takes two hits to die and the green sort of monster person, if I can't remember the actual name, um, takes three hits. Um, but you can just completely ignore them and just concentrate collecting the lanterns and make your way through the game. An absolute classic, I really enjoy this one. Um, it is pretty tough but it's a classic. Next up it's Mule and I'm well aware this is a huge fan favourite out there um, and interestingly I hadn't actually even heard of this game before um, surprisingly and had never played it either. It's a strategy game where you need to earn I guess more money than the competitors you're playing against. Just be wary that at the start here if you have four planeteers that will be four human players so you need to sort of press that down, the select button to press it down to one so that it's just you against the computer. Um, so it can be a bit of a slow burner there's no doubt about it um, and sometimes maybe a little bit boring but once you get the idea of it it seems like this would be quite a, an addictive style game though there's no way that I could do this game justice in this video and um, so I'm still to get my head around it I'm pretty sure I'll play it a lot more so that I can understand it and maybe do it justice in some future videos Thank you. 
So it's no surprise we've also got Millipede as part of the 400 mini games. This probably is pretty similar to Centipede, there's no doubt about it, but there's a little bit more to this one, there's more going on, there's a little bit more happening with the graphics. It might be the better game, they are pretty similar right enough. It's still a classic, really cool, um, I remember playing this one a lot as well on the Atari 2600. Um, I'm not really sure which one I prefer, they are pretty similar. Um, I think there's a few added differences to this game, but they're still pretty much the same game, to be honest. Now this might be one of my most favourite games on the collection, this is Minor 2049er, um, I actually really enjoy it, it's pretty cool, you, the idea is a little bit like Jumpman, if you ever played Jumpman you're really trying to highlight all the platforms um, on here, um, but sometimes I, I'm not entirely sure what's going, going on when I can actually take out the enemies, I'm pretty sure it's after you've collected some of the items on the screen um, I think you can't harm them when they're actually flashing, not entirely sure, but I guess once you've collected an item they seem to turn this kind of green colour and you can then um, sort of step on them 
uh, or take them out in some way but if they're flashing and you'll touch them then you will die and restart the level entirely that's one of the most frustrating things about the game right enough is if you die you will completely reset the level and start all over again regardless of what progress you actually made um, that's just a pity but because I think this is a really good fun game I like the concept of it um, graphics are a little bit basic but it's still a fun fun game to actually play <laughs> So next game up is Missile Command and I've played this on many a different system and happy to say this version is really, really decent. Um, I've played the Atari Lynx version, I've played the Commodore 64 version, Atari 2600 and um, it's probably pretty decent on most of the versions that I've actually played it. Um, but this one's really decent. It's the same idea, you're just trying to um, protect your bases there. You've got a limited number of missiles, you're trying to destroy the missiles that's coming down and obviously some of the other ships that are floating about as well. Um, and obviously the longer you can stay alive the more points you'll collect um, yeah but it does get pretty tough you will eventually run out of missiles and you'll probably run out of bases as well so it's most likely a bit of a high score chaser um, but still a very classic game a decent one at that <laughs> So next up is O'Reilly's Mine, um, and I really enjoyed this game, um, and I can't believe I'd never actually heard of it or never even played it before. It's quite an addictive style game, reminded me a little bit like Dig Dug, and um, it's that sort of an idea, so you're trying to collect all the items that you see here um, before the place gets flooded or you um, get caught with some of the monsters that seem to be appearing there. You can use dynamite to stop some of the, the, the monsters that are appearing. Um, but I thought this game was really good fun, very, very addictive, and it's certainly one of my most favourite games that is on the 400 Mini.
So this is Seven Cities of Gold and I guess much like Mule, there's no way I'm going to do this game justice in this short video. Um, I'm pretty sure the idea of the, the game is to try and um, use your expedition, do a little bit of exploring, find some islands, find some gold, that type of thing. Um, it seems a bit maybe um, deceivingly that, that it's got a lot of depth and I think that's probably what a lot of people liked about this game um, back on the original Atari 400 computer. Um, it does seem really cool but I'm going to have to spend a lot more time to it to try and understand it uh, and t try and find um, where the, the fun can be had because I think initially it does seem a little bit boring. It's one of those games you are going to have to put the time in to enjoy it. Much I guess like Mule. So there's no doubt about it, this is probably one of the most impressive games on here. This is Star Raiders 2. Um, definitely a little bit of a Star Wars theme going on, there's no doubt about it. There's probably just utilising the, um, the sort of success those films had. It's really, really cool. I'm not really that great at the game, I'm still trying to get my head around it, but I did enjoy the experience and I think this is certainly one of the better games that's been included on the carousel on the 400 Mini. <laughs> Go, <laughs> go, 
So second last game, this is Wavy Navy, and I sort of got Galaxian uh, feels from this game a little bit. But obviously you're on a, a, a sort of sea and you're a boat, and you're taking out the aircraft that's flying above. Great little idea, excellent concept, a, a nice little spin to the, the classic sort of Space Invaders idea. Um, it's quite addictive, good fun to play, um, and I really enjoyed it. It is pretty decent. Um, and that's something that's um, pleasantly surprised me about this little device. I've experienced a lot of new games um, that I'd never even heard of before and enjoyed it and probably maybe discovered a few gems that I'd never even heard of. Fantastic stuff. So last but certainly not least it's Yump and this is probably one of the most recent titles that was released on the indie scene a few years ago and on various different formats. Um, and this is a really decent game, um, but a, a few different times I've played it I've really struggled and then I've came back to it and breezed through the levels pretty quickly. I think once you get your head around it, it is a really decent game. There's also a jump button, but there's different squares here that either take the energy off you or you can jump further um, to the next sort of stage, which is pretty interesting. But there's a really decent game here and it is very, very striking indeed. It is good fun. Once you get your head around the concept and the, the sort of way it's going around, it it's a little bit trippy I guess to play, but there's a good game here and I really enjoyed it.
So that's it guys, that's every game played that was included as part of the Carousel games on the 400 Mini. A very mixed bag, obviously a lot of these games have aged pretty badly, like basketball for instance is one of those games that doesn't really need to be here, but there's a lot of classics here, a lot of really enjoyable titles. For me it was really discovering a lot of games I'd never actually heard of or even played before and it was a pleasant surprise at how much I actually enjoyed them. And There's a few games here I'm going to have to put more time into, like Seven Cities of Gold and Mule, but I think overall there's a decent collection of games here. But I think the more enjoyment will be had from adding your own games to these devices and discovering even more classics. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.